Good morning, everyone. So last week we were working on learning about time, time to the minute and elapsed time. So this week we are going to be learning about something new. We are learning about estimating liquid volume. So just like the last couple um, lessons, I'm going to make myself smaller, put myself in the corner so that you can focus on the uh, middle of the page. So here we go. All right, so as you can see up here, we're not going to do the solve and share this time, but we are going to answer the essential question. And that question is, what metric units are used to estimate and measure liquid volume? So if we look over here, we see that, oh, I'm trying to write on it and it is not working. Our question is, what is the capacity of the pail? Or how much liquid can the pail hold? So what we need to do is go over what units we can use to estimate because we're not actually going to take water and pour it into a pail. So we're going to look at our first way of measuring liquid, and that is a milliliter. So as you can see, it says a milliliter is about 20 drops from an eyedropper. So we know that an eyedropper probably ha is about this big. That is not a lot of water at all. It could maybe fill up a, a cap from a water bottle um, or make a little teeny tiny puddle on your counter. Maybe it's about the size of like a quarter or a penny. Um, so it's very, very, very small. And our other measurement um, to measure liquid is called a liter. And it says this water bottle, water bottle <laughs> holds about one liter. So that is a lot of water. Usually a liter is about as big as a soda bottle, one of those family size soda bottles, that's usually a liter. Um, so that's a lot of water or a lot of liquid. So what it wants us to do is find the capacity of this pail right here. So it says capacity or liquid volume is the amount a container can hold measured in liquid units. Two metric units of capacity are milliliters and liters. So first of all, we're going to scroll down here. Our first step, if you could see here, step one, we need to choose an appropriate unit and estimate. So like we said, and what we can see here, a thousand milliliters is one liter. If we are going to fill up this big pail, do we want to take a thousand dropper fulls of water and put it into that pail. No, we do not want to do that. It would take forever. So what is easier is we can use our bigger measurement or our liters to do so. So just like it says down here, it says a milliliter is too small. So we're going to use liters. The pail appears to be large enough to hold several liters. So if you can see kind of the size difference from the water bottle and the pail, we know and we can estimate that we are going to have to use more than one water bottle full of water to fill it up. So the second step we're going to do is check that the estimate makes sense. So like we said before, are we going to take 1,000 droppers of water to try to fill up that pail? Or are we going to take just a couple um, full water bottles to fill it up? To me, it makes way more sense to take a couple uh, liter water bottles to fill it up. So it says, count how many times you can fill a liter container and empty it into the pail. We are not going to do that today. We are not doing any experiments. If you would like to try and do that um, at home, please ask your parents and feel free to do that, but we're not going to do that today. So just here it says the pail holds about eight liters. So compare... Would you rather do 1,000 droplets or 1,000 milliliters to fill the pail or just eight liters, eight water bottles? So I would definitely pick the eight water bottles um, to help me fill up the pail. So for this one, we would pick, if we had to pick milliliters or liters, we would definitely pick liters. All right, so we're going to do a couple examples. So what it wants us to do is circle the better estimate for each um, liquid or uh, measure of liquid. So the first thing that we have is it looks like a glass of milk. Now, do we want to pick milliliters, the little droplet full of water, or do we want to pick liters? So here it says 250 milliliters we have to choose from 
or two liters. If we think back, the water bottle was one liter, one of those big water bottles, or you can think of a big soda bottle that you would share with your family. To me, that is way too big, way, way too big. It, it One uh, water bottle or one soda bottle would only fill a glass. There'd be so much left. So for me, this time, the milliliters, because it is, ooh, are we going to write here? There we go. Because it says 250, that makes more sense to me. I'm going to have way more left over if I'm using the liters than if I just took my time and um, did 250 of those little droppers full of, uh, in this case, I guess, milk. So that's what I'm going to pick for this one. Remember, milliliters is smaller and liters is bigger. So usually, not all the time, but usually if you have a smaller item that you want to measure liquid in, you are going to use milliliters. So here I have a, looks like a bucket, and it says five milliliters or one liter. Now, five milliliters is five of those little t uh, dropper tubes or one liter, which is about a, a big water bottle or a soda bottle that you share with your family. Five milliliters is so small, I know that that's, there's no way that that could even come close to filling up this bucket. So for this one, I'm going to pick one liter. Then I'm going to go down to number five, and it says a bottle of juice. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking orange juice or apple juice. It says 10 milliliters or one liter. So I'm thinking in my mind, and I'm remembering that my directions said that it is an estimate, and we know that an estimate is just our best guess. So a bottle of juice, it says 10 milliliters or one liter. So I'm going to think, is my bottle of juice more comparable to 10 little droppers or more comparable to a bottle of soda, a family-sized bottle of soda? And in my mind, I'm thinking a family-sized bottle of soda. So I'm going to go ahead and circle the one liter. You can't really see that, but <laughs> we know what it says. And our last example says a cereal bowl. So this says 300 milliliters or three liters. So I'm going to think of a bottle of soda or a bottle of juice is one liter. And I have a small cereal bowl. So again, I'm going to think that the smaller measure of liquid is probably going to um, work best here. So for my cereal bowl, I'm going to choose 300 milliliters because it is the bowl itself is a smaller um, container. So I hope that made sense. So just remember for this lesson, we are picking our best estimate. It does not want you to go ahead and take water bottles and put it in buckets. We don't have to do any of that. We are just taking an estimate or our best guess of what we think um, would be the best fit for measuring the liquid inside of whatever container it asks us to. So just remember milliliters is usually going to go to a smaller container. So if you see here, we picked milliliters for this small glass and a small cereal bowl. And we chose liters for a bottle of juice. So thinking of a big bottle of orange juice or apple juice or a big bottle of soda. And then here we had a big bucket. So we also chose liters for that. You just have to think of what you would, uh, what would be best for you if you were actually going to go ahead and measure the liquid inside. So again, I hope that made sense. And you have two lessons today. So as soon as you're done listening to this one, um, I want you to go ahead and go to 14.5 and I'll see you there. Bye.